freshman at HIMSS 2012. I'm with Aaron Titus, who is the Chief Privacy Officer of Identity Finder. Aaron, tell us your expertise and what you're doing at Identity Finder. Well, I'm an attorney. I specialize in information privacy law. And uh, at Identity Finder, we help to find and secure protected health information and uh, PCI data. For people who don't really know and don't have the background, can you explain what the basic legal and regulatory environment is, starting with HIPAA, going to high tech, to protect protected health information? So everyone has heard about HIPAA, and when I talk to healthcare professionals, they say, well, we have HIPAA, so we're safe. And that's not entirely true. HIPAA is a regulatory framework that uh, encourages interoperability of uh, insurance codes. As a part of that, there is a subset of, the, of, uh, of HIPAA uh, called the Privacy and Security Regulations that were enacted under as regulations under the authority of uh, HHS that gives regulations on how, per, on how uh, personal health information should be protected. It applies only to covered entities, uh, which are, for example, hospitals and, and, and other health related uh, organization. So ironically, if I give my blood pressure to a doctor, that is protected health information. If I give my blood pressure to myonlinedoctor.com, it is not covered under HIPAA because the website is not a covered entity. Explain the business associate component of the liability. Any company or organization or individual doing business with a covered entity or doing, uh, doing work for the covered entity is subject to the, the same protections and same liabilities uh, uh, as, as the covered entity through a business associate agreement. And so uh, if I were to do work for a hospital in which I would receive protected health information, I'd enter into an agreement with the hospital saying I agree to be bound by all of the rules and regulations uh, of HIPAA and HITECH. So take us to 2012. What do you see in your work uh, in analyzing security breaches as the current state of affairs? How secure is the information? You know, everybody talks about diamonds being forever, but in my experience, data is forever. And once you put information on a hard drive, it never goes away. Uh, what we find is that uh, information is often in secure databases, but then healthcare professionals, hospital managers, and uh, health information system managers will pull the information out on a regular basis to run weekly reports, uh, do patient analysis, financial analysis, and all of those copies are placed on hard drives and Excel files and Word documents, and sometimes emailed among doctors. They sit like landmines on laptop computers and desktop computers waiting to become a breach. Those are the forgotten copies that, uh, that, that, that are the source of so many breaches. In fact, in 2011, of all of the reported breaches to Health and Human Services, uh, every single one of them were data at rest, stored information that was lost or inappropriately used. On a daily basis, how many breaches do you find? Well, we monitor hacking websites and, uh, and, and other uh, online breaches. On any given day, um, I find five or six uh, breaches that are online, not to mention the ones that we never hear about. And, and most of these breaches never make headlines. Um, it's a, there's an ongoing uh, movement within the hacker community called anti-sec. And in the, within the hacker community, you have, you have the black hats, which are the really, really bad guys, the criminals. You have the white hats, who are the good guys, who learned how to hack to protect against the bad guys. Then you have what we call the gray hats. And they're the guys who want to do the right thing, but aren't opposed to using some technically illegal methods to reach perhaps a good result. The anti-sec movement is in the gray hats, the gray hats and the, the black hats, where the gray hats say, I am so tired of the, the abysmal state of technolo uh, technology security that I'm going to break into the system and expose all of the internal data in an effort to embarrass the, the organization into doing security right. Then you have the black hats on the other extreme who say, I'm just going to break into it to sell it and cause havoc and be a criminal. What about the EHRs that we have here at HIMSS? Do you think most of them are able to adequately 
ensure that da patient data is protected? You know, ironically, analog information is inherently more secure than, uh, than electronic records. Technology makes everything more efficient, including breaches. So whereas a healthcare breach, let's say you take a paper record and you put it in a dumpster, that is a one-to-one, -one, a single point um, uh, data breach where only one person at a time can read that, that piece of paper and it can only exist in one place. Now that we have electronic health records, breaches are astronomically more efficient and you can post, accidentally post electronic health records online and now they're available to millions or you know, billions of people at a time. What do you so, do at Identity Finders to solve this problem? Companies, uh, healthcare professionals, will reach into the secure database and export information uh, in Excel files and then forget about them. And they'll be on laptops and emails. What Identity Finder does is we search your entire networks, all of your network, every uh, database servers, email servers, um, uh, file servers, personal laptops, company desktops, and we will locate all of the locations of sensitive information, CPT codes, ICD-9 codes, ICD-10 codes, social security numbers, passwords, and we'll give you the tools to encrypt it, destroy it, redact the information, or quarantine it. Uh, I, a lot of administrators like the quarantine feature because you take it out and you can leave a little text file that says, hey, guess what, if you want your file, I've got it, but come oh, talk to me. That's nice. Well, it should be mandatory by law, your service. It's very good. Any parting words for us? HIPAA doesn't make you safe. HIPAA is not security. Even compliance is not security. Security is the interaction of human and technological systems. And you should be aware of any vendor that tells you that if you use my, my software or my service, you are HIPAA compliant because you cannot, it, Compliance is more than, than technology and it's more, uh, it, it, it involves humans. Well, we have a lot to think about. Thank you. I'm with Aaron Titus at HIMSS 2012.